Hey everyone, welcome to my debut YouTube video. Today I need to bring to your attention some significant changes in nicotine regulation heading our way in Australia in 2024. Changes that could have very serious impacts for all of us. Now, the title might seem a bit sensational, but I assure you it's not clickbait as this will have deadly impacts on thousands of Australians. So now, you might ask, is this going to kill thousands, and how? Well, let's dive into the proposed alterations. These are the proposed changes. Now, looking at this list of changes on the surface might appear acceptable. However, that's only because it fails to list the proposed new maximum allowed concentration of nicotine's new limit, and it's low, like scary low, even in prescriptions for smoking cessation from a medical professional there will now be a shockingly low maximum allowed nicotine concentration of only 20 milligrams per mil. This presents a significant issue. Consider the dose of nicotine found in disposable vapes across the country, which is, by the way, the most common form of vape used by vapers in Australia right now. Currently, these vapes have a concentration at about 50 milligrams per mil on average. To put it plainly, the new absolute maximum allowed concentration of nicotine for legal vapes will now be less than half of the current average vapor's nicotine strength that they're used to, which is way too low to compete with the black market which is already thriving in Australia for illegal vapes that aren't being regulated. It, it's just too low. It will not be able to compete with that. Not to mention, too low to help much of the most severe smokers actually stop smoking effectively, which may I remind you is the whole point of getting a nicotine prescription in the first place. This is alarming. There is a high likelihood that this restriction will lead to severe consequences. Those addicted to higher nicotine concentrations will have no legal alternatives other than to use cigarettes, almost certainly resulting in health risks. Additionally, the black market vape industry in Australia will thrive, and many will return to smoking tobacco, as it will be the only legal option for nicotine consumption. Now let's consider the impact on age verification in regards to IDs for those who are underaged. Currently, tobacconists sell disposable vapes at nearly every tobacconist store in the country. Post this ban, it's unlikely they'll cease selling. In fact, they may continue to sell these vapes illegally. Now, without the need for stringent age verification since selling in general, vapes of any kind will now be illegal, this, it is likely that because of that, they will stop IDing in general now when selling vapes, since it is now generally illegal to sell in the first place. The rationale behind this legislation is ostensibly to protect children, but it seems destined to backfire. In fact, this isn't even the first time a ban like this has occurred in Australia. Many don't realise that under the Morrison government there was a similar ban in October of 2021 on chemically pure nicotine imports without a prescription. So how effective was it in reducing vape use in Australia? Well, as you can see, here is a graph which I got from Australian government statistics which shows annual vaping rates in Australia for each group. And as you can see in the graph, since 2021's ban, contrary to what you may expect, vaping rates have actually increased across all age groups in the years since the ban, even among 18 to 24 year olds. Admittedly, it's not as significant as the other age groups, but it's still an increase, as evident in the graph. To conclude, this change, purportedly for children's sake, seems destined to backfire, as historical data and logical reasoning suggests. Australian adults with legal prescriptions for smoking cessation will likely find themselves without access to sufficient nicotine concentrations, forcing many to return to smoking or resorting to illegal sources to get nicotine vapes at higher concentrations. The legislation is counterproductive and outright dangerous. Humans have finally, after centuries of cancer deaths, discovered a safer way to extract nicotine than to just smoke cigarettes. 
And now, we are finally capable of removing the over 3,000 plus carcinogenic chemicals that cause cancer that are found in tobacco. And we are able to limit it to only one carcinogen in the form of chemically pure nicotine. Even thinking about it at all in a logical way will allow you to conclude that 3,000 carcinogens are way less healthy than the alternative of vaping only one in the form of nicotine. And yet, despite this being a life-saving alternative to smoking that actually works to help people, we are still banning it for all legal adults who are still, by the way, fully able to smoke however much they want to in the form of tobacco. And by the way, they don't need a prescription for that still. Even if you have a prescription, under these new regulations, if your prescriber, your doctor, thinks you need more nicotine than the pitiful maximum of 20 milligrams per mil, even to aid in smoking cessation, again, even if a medical professional deems it necessary, the government will not allow you under these new rules to access a concentration higher than 20 milligrams per mil even if it is recommended by a medical professional for an adult so that they can stop smoking. Even if the alternative is the patient dying of cancer from continuing to smoke tobacco, and even if you're a full legal adult with an actual prescription for nicotine, the government under these new regulations still under no circumstances will allow people to exceed the maximum dose of only 20 milligrams of nicotine per mil. Once again, for those who don't know what that means, that's literally a dose of nicotine that is less than half the current typical vape, vape user's nicotine concentration. Less than half of the current typical vape user's nicotine concentration. So finally, I have to say, there is not even a chance that the government's now only legal vapes in the country will actually even somewhat be able to compete with the, with the thriving black market, since the nicotine concentration is so low that much less outcompeting the black market, it probably won't even allow the most heavy smokers to quit, which may I remind you is the entire point of getting a prescription for nicotine in the first place. It is more than likely that the government will just ignore the issues that this change creates and never repeal the ban. Maybe they will in like a hundred years when the damage is caused and is undeniable and it's already too late to stop. As they're not going to be quick to admit they're wrong. They're a government after all. But we have one chance to stop this nightmare from becoming a reality. Here's what we have to do, and I mean all of us, as many as we can get to do it. We all need to contact every single person in the government with a publicly available email address. Tell them what I've told you about the problems with this regulation change, or even your own personal take on how this isn't a good idea. There are endless reasons this isn't smart. Just pick one and tell them about it. I'm well aware that unfortunately Australians are pretty lazy and apolitical in general, myself included. So I'm putting in the description a list of every parliament member on the federal level who has an email address that's publicly available which i could find i'm going to put a list of all of them in the prescription senators and federal parliament members mps and what i want you to do is send an email voicing the concerns about this legislation change or the regulation change once a week to every one of these email addresses listing the massive issues with this upcoming change and asking them not to go through with the changes. Now, weekly emails may sound excessive, but these regulations are coming into effect January 1st, 2024, and are going to be fully implemented in early March, 2024. We only have like a couple of months. We need to make the most of it. This is our only chance we will ever get to stop this nightmare from becoming a reality. Don't pass it off as too much effort, because if you don't act right now, or at least as soon as you can, and make yourself heard, we will lose our chance, and this will become law permanently. We only have a couple of months before our opportunity to stop this from happening is gone forever. I'm not just some vape addict who wants to continue my addiction either. I think it cannot be stressed enough that this will end up killing literally thousands in the span of a few years from cancer and other related smoking diseases. 
This is why I felt the need to make this video. And if it weren't for the actual cost to human life, I wouldn't have taken the time to make this. But once again, there will be actual people whose lives are brought to an early end because of this change. And not just one or two, but likely thousands of Australians every single year after this is implemented. So I am begging you from the bottom of my heart, don't go quietly into the night. Don't let the owners of these email addresses in the description say that they had no knowledge of the impact that this would have. Send so many emails about this that there is no way they can argue they weren't aware of the consequences of this change to regulations. So come on all you Redditors and keyboard warriors out there, put your talents to good use for a worthy cause, and share this video to your friends and family so they can also let their voices be heard. If you're wondering why you should do it, the answer is simple. Do it for your country, son. Do it for your country. And do it for the children. Do it for freedom. Do it for everyone who wants to simply live a healthy life without being forced to either poison themselves or break the law and become a criminal just for trying to access nic nicotine that's pure and at sufficient concentrations to stop them from returning to smoking. Hound these politicians. Tell your friends and family to do the same. Don't delay. I pray this admittedly desperate attempt and rushed attempt to inform people of this upcoming change and the disaster it will cause will get at least some traction because otherwise we might be done for.